This is a tracheal aspirate uh, from a 13-year-old girl with cystic fibrosis. Now, uh, when I teach culture types uh, from various body sites, I differentiate between lower respiratory and upper respiratory. And we are going to consider this tracheal aspirate a lower respiratory specimen, and you may also hear it called a sputum specimen. So uh, sputum specimens, when they come to the lab, uh, what's done is they are set up on, we have here sheep blood, chocolate, CNA, and McConkie's. Uh, but a, a, a slide is also made from the specimen, and it may be called a direct slide, a direct smear, a direct gram stain. And basically what that looks like, for example, on this, on this patient, is, uh, you know, sputum or material that was aspirated uh, is put on the slide. It's allowed to dry. The gram stain is made, and then it's red. And the purpose of that is to determine, well, for two reasons. Um, one, to see if it's an acceptable specimen because oftentimes when uh, patients, you know, in this, in this situation, uh, the patient, the, uh, it was an aspirate from the trachea, but oftentimes sputum specimens are collected by having the patient just basically spit into a cup. And what happens a lot of times is that we just get saliva. Now, an ideal sputum specimen should come from deep in the lungs. Um, so one of the things we have to do by looking at the, reading the direct smear is we look at the number of PMNs, polymorphonucleated cells, or simply leukocytes or white blood cells, because if there's an active bacterial infection, you're probably going to have a lot of those. And then we also look at the number of epithelial cells. So if there's a greater number of epithelial cells and, a f you know, fewer PMNs, we're probably looking at saliva. And if we, if we see more PMNs and le a fewer uh, epithelial cells, probably it's probably coming from deeper in the lung. Now, this is just a general rule. Of course, there are maybe some exceptions to that. All right, so when we looked at the slide, actually, uh, it had a lot of PMNs. Um, so meaning that it's an acceptable specimen. So this allows us to go ahead and work, go ahead and move forward with this culture because if it, if it were a bad specimen, uh, it may even be rejected and recollected. Now, the also another purpose of doing a direct smear is that it gives the physician an idea of what's going on. Uh, if the gram stain or the direct smear shows pleomorphic gram-negative rods... Well, that's quite a bit different than if it was gram-positive diplococci or, or lancet-shaped gram-positive cocci in, uh, in pairs. Um, so it's just to give, give the physician a little bit of extra information a little bit ahead of time. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at these plates. So as I said, we have sheep blood and chocolate. So we know that chocolate is a... Is a uh, enriched medium. Basically, everything is going to grow on it from the pathogens that we're looking for. Now, for this particular, <coughs> excuse me, uh, culture type, you know, the common pathogens that we're looking for are Streptococcus pneumoniae, Haemophilus influenza, members of Enterobacteriaceae. So that would mean like E. coli, Klebsiella pneumoniae. Actually, there are several members of Enterobacteriaceae. Uh, that would show up here. Um, other things that could show up would be uh, maybe yeast, like Canada. And um, I think that pretty much covers most of them. You know, like I said in previous videos, Staph aureus seems to kind of make its way into the top 10 list of pathogens in a lot of sites. Um, but, you know, even though I list those as common pathogens, we always have to as microbiologists, keep an open mind uh, and eye out for anything, because really any bacteria has the potential to be a pathogen. Okay, so going back to the plate. So we always assess on a culture like this whether there is normal flora, because we could almost, ex almost always expect some. Now looking at these two plates, I don't see any normal flora. I just see one colony type, and it's growing, of course, both on the sheep blood and the chocolate. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at the CNA. 
Now, the CNA has no growth, and the McConkie's does have growth. Now, what this tells me, and that's why it's so important to understand what your media, you understand your media, what the function is and what, what, it, what it can do and what, how bacteria will behave on it. There's no growth, and CNA is a selective media, and it's selective for gram positives. So since there is nothing growing, that tells me that, you know, on the chocolate and the sheep blood, I didn't see any normal flora. And normal flora oftentimes ten tends to be gram positive. So, and we have this uh, gram negative organism growing over here. So you would think that the gram negative would be, it's inhibited over here, that we would see if there was a uh, normal flora present, we would see it here. Because like, as I said, it's gram positive oftentimes. And I don't see anything. So this just kind of uh, strengthens my, my belief that there is no normal oral flora in this culture. Okay, let's go ahead and talk about the uh, McConkie's side here. Now, whenever we read a uh, McConkie's uh, plate, you know, McConkie's is selective and differential. It's selective for gram negatives. It's going to inhibit gram positive organisms. So we can probably be pretty rest pretty certain that what we have over here is just looks like just one colony type of a gram negative rod. And once again, I'll say it: gram negative rod means members of Enterobacteriaceae and possibly Pseudomonas um, because the more fastidious gram-negative rods like Haemophilus, those are going to require probably something, uh, an, uh, a, an enriched media like Haemophilus influenza specifically requires chocolate to grow. So, uh, but one thing we always have to comment on when we are reading a McConkie's plate uh, or gram-negative plate, generally speaking, is whether the colonies are clear or if they are colored or pink. Um, so these ones are, are clear. So we call them lactose negative, and they are lactose non-fermenters, right? Because the function of McConkie is, I mean, the, the differential function is whether the gram-negative rod can utilize <clears throat> lactose or not. So I'm going to call these lactose negative gram-negative rods. <clears throat> All right, so what are we going to do with this? Uh, now, in, uh, in, um, other, in another culture I, uh, video, I talked about you know, not going through the whole workup, the whole gamut here, but actually this is pretty straightforward. Whenever we're working with gram-negative rods like this, the first test that we're going to do is an oxidase. Now, some of you may be asking, why aren't you doing a, a, a gram stain? Well, I don't need to do a gram stain because I know, I mean, based on looking at all the plates, I only see one colony type. And uh, this one, anything growing on a, on a McConkie's is pr pretty much going to be treated as if it were pathogenic. And I know that, that only these healthy gram-negative rods from Enterobacteriaceae and Pseudomonas are going to grow over here, so I don't really need to do a gram stain. Now, your microbiology instructor may make you gram stain everything, so if that person does that, then you follow what they tell you to do. Um, but as I said before, the first test that we're going to do is the oxidase, and we're not going to do the oxidase off the McConkie's because the oxidase is a color-based test, and if these colonies were pink, that may interfere with our result, reading our colored results in the oxidase test. So we're going to go ahead and take it off either the chocolate or the uh, sheep blood. And then uh, really, it's pretty straightforward after that. This is going to be set up to an instrument of some kind for identification and susceptibility testing. So at this time, I need to send out a report to the doctor, a preliminary report to give them an idea. You know, they've already received the direct smear, which told them that there were plenty of PMNs and not very many epithelial cells making this a good specimen, and that there were gram-negative rods on this slide. Now that, what I see here, confirms what I saw on the gram stain. So, two things. Since we expect normal flora on this type of culture, I'm going to comment on it. I'm going to say no normal oral flora, and then I'm going to comment on uh, the type of bacteria it is. Now, just uh, based on what I see and what I smell, this is looking like Pseudomonas aeruginosa. Pseudomonas kind of has this fruity smell to it. It's a lactose negative 
uh, organism, which is, is what we're seeing here. It's a lactose non-fermenter. Um, so I'm going to say many probable Pseudomonas aeruginosa identification and susceptibility testing to fall.